All right. Well, uh, good afternoon uh, for those that are on the East Coast and good morning to everyone else. Uh, thank you so much, Chief Bill and uh, Councilwoman Ortega for that wonderful prayer. And what a way to start uh, this NIHB National Tribal Health Conference. And I do appreciate the opportunity to speak to each and every one of you today regarding the uh, effects of COVID-19 to the Navajo Nation. And I'm sure this is uh, similar to what many uh, of our tribes have gone through through this uh, public health emergency. Uh, this pandemic that has uh, affected each and every one of us. Uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Nez. For uh, my uh, Navajo relatives, bring you greetings from our Navajo Nation capital. Window Rock, Arizona. And as I was um, thinking about the words to say for the keynote, I was reminded of our people going through some hardships in our history, not just Navajo or, or not just tribes in the Southwest, but for tribes and indigenous peoples throughout the world. And as we celebrated Indigenous Peoples Day on Monday, it is a, an important time to remind uh, everyone, to remind our federal friends in Washington, D.C., the enormous contributions that indigenous people have done to for this country, the United States of America. And as we go through this pandemic, and I'm sure it's a reminder for all of us. And also now we have an opportunity to share those stories of overcoming and strength with our younger generation that are now at home. Uh, many of our schools are doing online classes. And so it is important for parents and families to come together and also teach our way of life, our culture, tradition in our language. And I'll come back to that point in a bit. Um, I want to also say thank you to uh, the NIHB board members and the many partners uh, that have made this uh, conference uh, successful. And for the viewers out there, thank you for taking the time to hopefully be encouraged and be inspired to fight even harder uh, into the future for our citizens, our nations, uh, our elders, our younger generations. I, I want to share with you what the Navajo Nation has gone through and being the president of the Navajo Nation. We have gone through another tough time in our history, but there is an inspiring story happening, not just on Navajo, but clear across Indian country that we will overcome and we will survive, even though there are comments from even leaders saying that this virus may wipe out some tribes, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, my brothers and sisters, this virus will not wipe 
us indigenous nations off this planet because of our strength and who we are. You know, here on the Navajo Nation per capita, we, we were hit very hard. And based on the yesterday, last evening's um, epidemiology report, uh, the tests that have been administered here on the Navajo Nation, and I say these are residents that are actually living on our land. It's estimated that there are 350,000 uh, Navajos all around the world, and half of those do live on our Navajo Nation lands. Those that have been tested, a 113,000 141 people. And that is over 50% of our total population here on the Navajo Nation. And you would think that's good news. I think it's good news. I think it's worthy of national attention, but once the virus went away here on Navajo and we got the virus, I use this term lightly, under control, national media attention kind of went away. One thing that we've learned from this pandemic is the portrayal and the reinstatement of the poor, poor Indian, you know, stories that have come out from these, this pandemic. But you don't hear stories of Navajo has tested over 50% of their total population. That is per capita more than any other state in the country and probably more than many countries throughout the world. But when it was at the height of the pandemic here on Navajo, as you all know, national media attention was at its height here and people were looking at Navajo as what's going to happen. And as you all know, and we'll come to stories of resilience. I think resilience has now been used, overused way too much, but what a, a term to use to show. And I used the term overcomers. And we will hear stories uh, about tribes overcoming this pandemic, even though there was a failure from this administration to support us and even give us our share of relief. And I'll come back to that shortly. We do have tribal leaders and many of you that are viewing who have some inspiring stories. And the panel right after this keynote Gwendina Lee, Ge Lee Gatewood from the White Mountain Apache Tribe, the chairwoman there. Cyrus Ben, chief of the Mississippi Band of Choctaw, will share with us these story, stories of overcoming through some difficult times. And many, many others that are on this uh, virtual conference. I commend each and every one of you. We are all in this together. We are all interconnected and we are and we will overcome this monster that has snuck into our homes, our communities, our tribal nations and this country. And the positive test out of the 113 plus thousand that have uh, that were tested here on Navajo, 10,737 have tested positive for COVID-19. And one thing that we're tracking here on our nation is the recovery rate as well. The recovery rate is at 7,352. So if you were to subtract that from the 10,000, you will see uh, an accurate count of who is infected with this virus on our nation. But you know, in epidemiology, it doesn't work like that, right? You count the positive cases from the onset to today. And that, that's what makes it 
seem extreme in our communities. And 571 of our relatives have lost their fight to COVID-19. Our prayers go out to the family members who have lost loved ones through these trying times. And let me also say to those who've lost loved ones all across the country, our thoughts and prayers go out to each and every one of you through these trying times. And Stacy brought up a good point about following the recommendations of the public health professionals is very important. The CDC, the NIH, we here have put in place 24 public health emergency orders. And some have said that they have they are one of the strictest in the country. We are all sovereign nations. So that means we have the ability to incorporate very stringent public health orders, mandating it, putting it into policy and law to protect our people. And that's what the nation, the Navajo Nation has done. Early on in February, well, let me go back to January. January and February, when we heard the news that the po there is a possibility that this virus would come into our country, and now we know we have been devastatedly impact impacted by COVID-19. What, what we did was we developed a preparedness team to begin to go door to door to let our people know that this virus may come into our lands. And a lot of prevention work was done. If we, if Navajo were a state, we would have been maybe the 47th or the 48th state to get a positive case here on our land. In March, we were surrounded by states that have, that had COVID positive cases. Before we even got our first positive case on the Navajo Nation, we issued a uh, public health emergency to start pushing back. But as you all know, this virus is very sneaky. This monster, once it came onto our nation, spread and multiplied into various parts of our nation. And we've got hit hard and so many other tribes throughout the country have gone hit hard as well because of the uh, most vulnerable population that we have in our communities. We have high rates of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, here on Navajo, we still have over 500 uranium mines still open, which contribute to cancers. And at that time, we were getting information from the CDC, NIH, from the state, um, on how to combat this virus. And we appreciate the support but here on Navajo, we said, you know what? This virus needs a Navajo name. And so that was a challenge. Not to give a, a name in Navajo that scares people off, but also to make sure it's a scientific name used on the nation for our medicine men, our um, public health professionals. And so we came up with the Kosentsagi-Nast Aids Atta. You know, the big cough, the big respiratory illness with the number 19. So that everybody knows what we are talking with. And now everybody knows that the Kosentsagi-Nast Aids Atta is COVID-19. And when we began to talk about uh, the Navajo term, we also started thinking about 
how do we utilize our way of life teaching, our culture and tradition to help us? Because a lot of the scientific, the non-Navajo, the non-Native American scientific terms had to be inter interpreted into the Navajo language. And sometimes that's going to be uh, difficult for Navajo people, especially those that only speak Diné to understand. And so, you know, as being the vice president and now the president of the Navajo Nation, I've always utilized the term monsters. If you know a little bit about our culture, our tradition, and our way of life teaching, the hero twins, since from time immemorial, there have been battles with monsters. And what I recall as a young boy learning and hearing about the hero twins fighting off monsters that were plaguing our people here, it is the same thing that our people are fighting against. But these are modern day monsters. And you've probably heard me term this before. You know, when the monsters uh, came in during the Hero Twins uh, fight, we were uh, taught that we have weapons and we have the armor to combat these modern day, uh, I'm sorry, these monsters. And back then we heard stories of monsters called lice, poverty, old age, hunger. And you fast forward into the 21st century, we have modern day monsters. You got diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer. You have alcoholism, drug addiction, depression, suicide that are plaguing our people today. And now we have a new monster called COVID-19. And so as we started messaging and preparing our, our Navajo people for this virus to come in our nation, into our nation back in March, early April, we framed it in that way that we need to be equipped with the weapons to co combat this modern day monster, COVID-19. And that's the knowledge that we receive from public health professionals all around us and all across the country. And wearing a mask, and you've heard me say this, I'm sure it, the quote that I've used is, wearing a mask is not a sign of weakness. Wearing a mask makes you a warrior because you're helping to protect your people, and you're actually saving lives, whether you know it or not. See, these are the armor as we fight this monster. And this is an ongoing battle. We don't have no vaccine for COVID-19. So we need to continue to fight this monster out of our, keep it out of our homes and our communities and our nation. And as we, gone, as we move through this pandemic, we even focused our attention on the young people. Clear across the country, you know, we all heard that the young people were not paying attention to these public health uh, recommendations or even these orders. Of course, we were young once, many of us. We felt we were Superman or Superwoman. Statistics does show that if you are a young person, you are more likely to overcome the virus, yes. But you can, as a young person, spread this virus to that most vulnerable population, which is our elders, our disabled individuals. And so when we began to talk to our young people, we said, you all are modern day warriors and we need your help. We need your help to be on the front lines of this battle and this war to help get water to our elders, to be that runner 
to go to the supermarkets to get food for your elders and to help out our elders that may not have family members available. And the reason why I bring this up is that we do have the answers, the solutions to many and maybe all of our problems in Indian country. If we just dig deep into our teaching and into our culture and our tradition and our language. Another example is diabetes. We just got through uh, a good um, harvest. On the onset, we also challenged our families. Now that back in March and April, students were at home. Parents were at home. People were at home because we put a shelter in place order mandating everybody to stay home. But what we did say to everybody is rather than feel like they're boxed in at home, that they should resurrect their farms that are close to their homes to put more attention on our values and our way of life teaching. And I saw many of our people going out and planting as we're in October now, I see a lot of produce coming out of that challenge that we gave to our citizens. And that falls into mental health. I know there's a big discussion right now about how this virus is affecting our young people and other people, their mental health. And we knew that on the onset. And so what we wanted to do is keep our young people, our families busy and to also rekindle uh, their family, their positive relationship with their family members. I even got stories from students that say, thank you, President, for doing the lockdowns. Well, yeah, that was surprising to me as well and the stay-at-home orders. I, and, and she said, I've never been so close to my parents ever. And they were able to do things together and we actually cleaned off our dinner tables, right? Especially here on Navajo because we had a lockdown in the evenings. So home-cooked meals, of course, healthy, healthy meals were prepared people around the dinner table once again, talking about what they're going through. Don't get me wrong, of course, there are other issues that are still here within the nation. But I wanted to share with everyone that it's just not this doom and gloom of this C-19 pandemic in Indian country. There are positive stories that many of us can share with the outside communities that show that we are all overcomers. And these, the armor, being a warrior has been rekindled here in Indian country. Even though there was lack of support from our stewards, again, broken promises from treaties that we've um, signed with the federal government, but we didn't roll over and give up, right? We all came together. And you see stories of that happening all across the country of people helping people. Five fingered beans. No matter what nationality, no matter what tribe, no matter what ethnic group, we are all five fingered beans and we're all in this together. And this is a continual battle that we have with this administration and with the federal government at times. But I do appreciate our congressional delegation, those that are fighting for what's right in Indian country. And now I think with the national attention that we're all receiving, here's an opportunity 
to magnify the strength and the resilience of Indian country. There are people all over the world, all over this country that are asking, what can we do to help tribes throughout the country? I think the first thing they want to hear is we want more food, we want more cleaning supplies. Uh, what I've started to say is contact your senator, contact your congressmen and women, and challenge them to have a better relationship with the 574 tribes throughout this country. That I see is the future. This pandemic hit us hard in Indian country, but here is an opportunity to challenge our lawmakers and those that are running for the highest position in this land, the US presidency to fulfill those promises that were made by our ancestors and their ancestors for better infrastructure, resources for education and healthcare, unfunded mandates. You know, it hasn't been fully funded. Uh, they are Indian health services to this day. And now as we move into self-determination, many tribes are wanting to take on that responsibility. And that should be supported by our federal friends and our lawmakers in Washington, D.C. And so as we go into some uncertainty, right? There's no vaccine, no cure for COVID-19. It's more so than, than ever before that we come together once again, as we came together to push back on uh, the census, right? Even though the census has ceased now, voter registration here in Arizona was cut off October 15th as the last day to register to vote here in Arizona. But we continue to battle and fight for what is right for our people. I just want to encourage us to think about that during this conference and with the uncertainty of this pandemic. This may be the new normal all around the world, especially now with the fear of people taking the vaccine, the C-19 vaccine. And so these outbreaks will occur but let us also remind ourselves to use our way of life teaching, our culture and tradition and our language to fight these monsters within our tribal nations. Our ancestors fought hard for us to be here this day. Now it is our turn as tribal leaders and as indigenous citizens to fight even harder for what is right for the future of our people. Thank you so much for listening to uh, me for this keynote address. We look forward to all the keynote address that are gonna be um, offered during this uh, conference. Thank you to the National Indian Health Board for their advocacy for all of Indian country. So let us be warriors and continue to fight for our people. So thank you so much, God bless you. God bless all our tribal nations, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much.